description this game. What's up you guys, Avery here. Wanted to bring you guys a deck profile of a interesting hell of a deck. And uh, clearly, as you can see, it is Sacred Beast. And I have been testing this deck for the past, uh, I would say, four or five days. I originally got this build from Robbie Cole. Um, so ever since his deck profile of it showed up, I've just been testing the living hell out of this deck. And I have to say, this is the probably the most consistent build of Sacred Beast that I have tested. And I absolutely love it. I mean, I went as far to test 100 hands with this, you guys. And out of 100 hands, uh, you have a 25% chance to just absolutely brick where, you know, to me, a brick is, you know, opening up you know, your bricks of Dark Magician and Red Eyes and, like, three hand traps. That being, let's say, Ash, Phantomaze, and Ghost Ogre. Yes, they can possibly play you out of this situation, but if you're going first, that's just not going to help you, and you really want to go first with this deck. However, on the flip side of that, um, opening up completely busted was about 48% of the time, and then opening up just sort of meh, where it was workable, and by meh, I mean just ending on Dragon of Red Eyes, which is still, I realize now, incredibly fucking busted, that that even of it, even in of itself could be considered a good hand, just ending on Dragon of Red Eyes, because this card is so damn good. Oh my god, I literally just got done playing against Shadal, and twice, twice, he tried to Ghost Ogre my Dragon of Red Eyes. The first time he did it, I literally typed in the chat box, LOL, don't work. Homeboy tried it again, and it doesn't work. This card is so broken, and literally, I thought it was broken, and I had totally forgotten about the fact that it pops monsters on the field up to two, since you're playing two vanillas. Um, we'll get into its effect in a minute, and then I also forgot until just getting done playing shit all, that it can pop not just face up monsters, but face down too, even more busted. Let's go ahead and get into this deck list, and then I will explain everything uh, at the end. So, for our hand traps, um, we are playing three Ash Blossom, one Baylor, three Phantomaze, three Ghost Ogre. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're probably thinking, Avery, what the hell, you're playing, a, the, what, three, six, nine, you're playing ten hand traps, not including Call by the Grave, if you want to count that as a hand trap. I know it seems like a lot. But holy hell, I love playing a lot of hand traps. And I all I always had this feeling in the back of my head as a player that I always wanted to have like a good number of hand traps in my deck. To me, this is just absolutely fantastic. I've been very tempted to take out two copies of Ghost Ogre and bump Valor up to three and put Ghost Ogre at one. Just because of the fact that Ghost Ogre, it's good, but it's good in its own right. You know, it doesn't negate effects. And I found certain times where I would rather just the effect be negated with Valor. Valor is also not once per turn, um, whereas Ghost Ogre and Ash, they're once per turn. And it's like, you know, the opponent uses, let's say, Salamander Great Gazelle. You know, you Ogre it, but then they're still going to be able to dump a card. If they use Bailinx and you Ogre it, okay, it goes to the grave, they get their Sanctuary. Yes, it's dead, but I, I don't know. I've been kind of on the fence about that, but... This ratio works very, very well, and it also gives you a lot of room to side deck. Um, like if you're playing against a synchro heavy deck that runs Needle Fiber or Halki Fibrax, whatever you want to call it, uh, you can take out the three Phantomaze, throw in three Nibiru. If you see that Ghost Ogre's not working, you can take out two copies, throw in two Artifact Lancia, um, and it just it, it really does work very well. I also recommend that you look at the original build on uh, Robbie Cole's channel where he showed it from the OCG perspective where the guy was playing double... Um, there can be only one TC Boo um, and three copies of Skill Drain. I had to kind of make some changes for the TCG. So this is like the TCG build. Um, for our regular monsters, we're playing three copies of Chaos Summoning Beast, three Dark Beckoning Beast, and only one Dark Summoning Beast. For our Sacred Beast, we're playing two Haman and two Raviel, and then we're playing one Dark Magician and one Red Eyes Black Dragon, obviously for our Red Eyes Fusion play. For our spells, we're playing Double Allure, Triple Call by the Grave, one Fallen Paradise, one Red Eyes Fusion, three Super Poly, three Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed, one Upstart, one Skill Drain, and two, there can be only one. Such a good Floodgate. Side deck, we're playing two Artifact Lancia, three Nibiru, three Dark Ruler No More, three Twin Twister, three Evenly Match, and one Imperial Order. Extra deck, um, we're playing three Super Poly targets in the form of Starving Venom, Mud Dragon of the Swamp, and Earth Golem Matic Mister. This was um, Herald of the Arclight, and I just never made it, so I just took it out just for just to have another target in case I need it. Earth Golem Matic Mister is actually very, very good. We'll be getting into that in a minute. And of course, Dragon of Red Eyes is... Oh, MVP. 
Um, one Halky Fibrax, I actually forgot to take this out before I started recording. Um, I ended up taking out Halky Fibrax for Boral Sword Dragon, just because I really never find myself needing or wanting to play uh, Halky Fibrax. You could take this out for another Link 2, or even just throw in like a Boral Sword or Boral Load, anything that you want. Uh, we're playing one Curious, one IP Mascarena, one Phoenix, one Unicorn, one Link Cross, one Link Karibo, one Avermax, one Anaconda, one Anima, and one All Mirage. I really don't make a lot of things in this extra deck other than um, the fusions, not counting Mud Dragon and the Swamps. I just threw that in. Um, typically, I'll make like Unicorn or Phoenix if I want to get rid of a problematic card. Um, most of the time, I'm making either All Mirage or Anaconda to go into Dragon of Red Eyes. Um, so, what makes this deck absolutely so broken? Well, the fact that if you open up Dark Beckoning Beast and a Sacred Beast, or if you open up Beckoning Beast and the Spell, or Beckoning Beast and a Chaos Summoning Beast, you have these very good two-card combinations that um, if you open up, let's say, Chaos Summoning Beast and Dark Beckoning Beast, you end on a board of the Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed, um, possibly some Floodgates, depending on your hand, or Call by the Graves. Um, and then you're also ending on Fallen Paradise that you've drawn two cards off of, uh, a Haman in Defense Mode, and you're also ending on Dragon of Red Eyes and an Anaconda on your board, which can't be attacked because you're playing your Haman in defense mode. And it it sounds very gimmicky, but it's actually very, very good. Um, and you, you might say, well, Avery, what, what's with the ratios? What's going on here? You would think that only running one copy of Fallen Paradise is kind of bad, um, which is funny because I had a guy on, on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro get pissed and he called my deck a dog shit cheese deck. Uh, so I guess he just took a piece of cheese and threw it on a pile of dog shit. But uh, <laughs> this is far from being a dog shit cheese deck, you guys. I could very easily see this deck being played at a regional, uh, probably not a YCS, but definitely local and regional level because this deck is just that explosive. Uh, especially if you're just able to stall your opponent out on their turn with hand traps and then just make a comeback and just blow your board out of the water and just destroy them. Um, for those of you who don't know what these cards do, Dark Beckoning Beast... When it's summoned, uh, you can add any Sacred Beast to your hand or a card that specifically lists any of those cards in its uh, in its text from your deck to your hand except itself. Uh, and then also a Dark Baking Beast effect is that you can normal summon a Fiend Monster with zero attack and defense in addition to your normal summoner set. You only gain the effect once per turn. So you summon Beckoning, search for a card, summon out Chaos Summoning, which contribute itself to special summon a Sacred Beast from your hand, i.e. Haman. And then you can banish it from your grave to get a copy of Fallen Paradise to your hand. So you summon this guy out, get out Haman, banish it from the grave, get Fallen Paradise, play Fallen Paradise, draw two cards. And with Haman in defense, the only monster that they can attack is Haman. And then with Fallen Paradise, all of your Sacred Beasts cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Very, very, very good. I want to go ahead and get into a quick solo game here and hopefully be able to show you guys... Um, what kind of hands you can get. So this would actually be a good example of a hand that's kind of meh. It all depends on what you draw off of the allure. This may be an example of a bad hand, um, <laughs> and this may very well be an example of a bad hand, um, just because that's literally how the deck can happen sometimes. Yeah, so this is a good example of a bad hand. You just, you didn't open up well. It literally happens. This is your 25% of the time um, hands. Uh, this here is your more 75 to 50 percent of the time hands. I say 75 percent because I took the hands that were sort of meh, which majority of the time was just opening up Red Eyes Fusion as your only play to make Dragon of Red Eyes, um, and the busted hands together into just one. So 75 percent of the time you're going to get at least a playable hand. So this is a perfect example. In this case, you would summon Dark Beckoning Beast. You're going to use its effect to add the Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed to your hand. Now, Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed. Uh, when it's activated, you can add any of the Sacred Beasts to your hand, or a card that specifically lists them in its text from your deck to your hand. And then once per turn, you can discard a card, special summon a Fiend Monster with zero attack and defense from your grave. And then also once per turn, if you control a level 10 monster, you can add a continuous spell from your grave to your hand, and you can only activate one per turn. But these things stack. So if you have three on the board, you can discard three cards, get out three Fiends with zero attack from your graveyard. What's very cool with this is that let's say you have a second copy of Spirit Gates Unleashed in your hand. You can activate the seven Spirit Gates Unleashed, use its other two effects. Then once you get a level 10 monster on the field, i.e. a Sacred Beast, you can use your seven Spirit Gates Unleashed. Um, when you use its effect to discard to get out, let's say, Chaos Summoning Beast, you can then use that 
the seven spirit gates unleashed to get that same continuous spell you just discarded back to your hand so you're getting a monster out for free essentially so continuing on with this combo your activate spirit gates unleashed um i like having haman on turn one there's really nothing else to grab at this point so we're going to go for haman then for our extra normal summon we're going to summon out chaos summoning beast we're going to use its effect to tribute itself to summon out haman in defense mode you want to do this first because if you make the red eyes fusion play first um you will be locked out of special summoning and normal summoning for the rest of the turn you guys so you want to make sure that you're tributing your chaos summoning beast first to get out haman and then proceeding with your play so now that you've done that um with a hand like this uh i mean you can activate upstart goblin draw a card you hit the red eyes fusion that's not a good example <laughs> um personally i wouldn't really want to draw quite honestly um just because i'd be afraid of doing something like that like hitting the red eyes fusion so you really don't have to worry about the cards that you discard anyway because at the end of the day you're going to have more than enough um so you're going to discard off the um seven spirit gates to get out the chaos summoning beast you're going to link summon in anaconda you're going to pay 2,000 life points to use its effect to dump a polymerization or fusion spell in this case red eyes fusion you are then going to dump from your deck or hand to the graveyard red eyes and dark magician to get out dragon of red eyes now that that's on the board you can use chaos summoning beast effect to banish it from your graveyard to add fallen paradise to your hand and then once you do that you can activate fallen paradise you control a sacred beast so you get to draw two cards and this is typically the things you'll draw into is like a hand trap and a super poly just cards to stop your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. now at this point you'd want to activate the upstart drawing a card you just drew into another seven spirit gate so now you can't activate it this turn obviously because you already activate one but on the next turn you can activate it get another search and then if you want to you can ditch two cards get out two fiends with both of these effects with zero attack and defense to your field they stack right that's it's like lone fire blossom you can use multiple in the same turn so this would be like your your starting field um and then of course you're going to set the call by the grave and the super poly you have a ghost ogre and this as discard fodder for the dragon of red eyes um, they can't attack anything else because of haman's effect while it's in defense the only monster that can be attacked by the opponent is itself and whenever it destroys a monster battle they take an extra thousand damage this is quite consistent it really is and uh <laughs> i've had so much fun playing this damn deck and just even just ending on a board of dragon of red eyes is just so incredibly busted like i've had hands where the only playable card i have is red eyes fusion i'll activate it dump my cards this is another good hand too um dump my cards and i'll just end with dragon of red eyes and like hand traps and i i end up winning the game because dragon of red eyes is that good let me know what you guys think in the comments below about this deck are you guys going to try and test this out in Yu-Gi-Oh pro i'm going to be really pissed if i start seeing a bunch of sacred beasts in there um but let me know what you guys think because this is to me it seems very consistent very fun i'm definitely going to be playing this uh when it comes out <clears throat> still trying to figure out what i want to do since dragon of red eyes will be coming out in the 2020 so not right when the sacred beast stuff comes out um i'm considering taking out red eyes fusion for a copy of cerulean skyfire since that's a negator with haman um so i'm still trying to kind of figure out what it is that i want to do with that but i'm going to go ahead and end off the video um with muting my microphone and playing out this hand and just showing you how it works so if you guys only want to watch up at this point thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video but if you want to watch uh, another kind of test hand and how this works out go ahead and stick around for this hand so with that being said thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next video